Yay, we're live. Good morning, everybody. Sorry, we're running a couple of minutes behind. Oh man, I'm running way more behind than I like to be. I try to aim for, nine o'clock is my aim, and so I try to plan for 8.45, so hopefully I'm not too late. Yeah, that's a good rummy girl. Let's see. Oh, there's the puppies. There's the babies. They were so sweet early this morning at like 5.30 this morning. It was still really dark out. And um, a few of them were nursing very loudly. And so I got some videos of them, sent them to their families. And then a couple of them were sleeping so peacefully. It was just really, there's something about the quiet hours in the early morning um, when they're all sleeping really hard. And it's just really like, um, I think it was Audrey, Andre and Blueberry. Uh, let's see, Kitty and Ollie were both sleeping. It was Audrey, Blueberry, and Peanut were eating. And um, Remy was just out cold through it all. She wasn't, she didn't even budge. Hi, sweetie. Hey, good morning, John. Um, so we're um, waiting for family still on some names. We do have, so Snowflake was named Audrey. Um, the nicknames that they have were picked by Bradley. He, um, Remy was, is like his dog. So, um, uh, this will be bright. Oh, oh wait, yeah, no. I guess I forgot to turn the lights on. Um, I didn't be able to watch. Where's this one? Uh -huh. So Bradley picked the, there we go. Bradley picked their, their nicknames. And then the family is of course pick their real names, but um, Kiwi is keeping his name, which we're really excited for. Bradley had the sweetest grin on his face when I told him that the family liked the name that he chose. Um, and their names all fit them so perfectly. Audrey, it like fits, it fits, like it fits her modeling. She's got this. Oh, hello. How about the yeah. Yeah. Um, and Joe is really going to get to see um, some more baths today because, Dad, we're going to have to get baths because they're covered in poop. Oh, no. That's okay, though, because we need to change all this out anyway. Then we'll have clean puppies and a clean bed. And this time we'll kind of wait for Joe to be around. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Peggy and Kathy. Um, oh, back to names. So orange here, he is Ali. His name is Ali. It's short for Oliver. Oh, I just love him. His coat is so pretty. I love to be snuggled. I was talking yesterday about, um, I mean, I've, just, I've spoken about this a few times, but you know, we've all, up until this litter, we've had only spike litters. And so, um, seeing a litter, you know, and they've all been um, uh, mothered by different moms, but seeing the difference in the puppies is still really interesting because uh, if you look at Spike's puppies, um, like Rio and Vienna, um, uh, I'm not sure so much on Theo really, um, but Spike has a very like distinct sort of on his, so Cutie kind of shows it just a little, what I'm talking about. So Spike's um, blaze, the brown right here, um, comes in and then comes back out over the eyes. It kind of makes, it makes a V, a pretty sharp V. And if you look at Rio's face, you'll see exactly what I mean. Um, it's really easy to, it's really easy to tell um, it's a Spike litter. And so it's just been um, kind of interesting to see there those sorts of differences that we're really used to seeing as just kind of being typical for our puppies. Or as they're getting older, there's all these little things that we just keep seeing. We're like, oh, that's new, that's different. So we're really excited to see how um, Rio is gonna change the genetics a little bit. One of the big reasons we, um, 
we're replacing um, we're replacing Spike's stud dog status with Rio. Um, is because um, Spike has a very he has a strong um, um, in his uh, in his ancestry he has a strong blue merle um, Cody I guess and um, he has quite a bit of blue merle and so we wanted to kind of delete that a little bit and so that's one of the reasons there are some people asking kind of why. Um, and so when Re when Rio became um, an option to just hang on to with the situation with Harris, um, we don't, we've already been thinking about getting a different Blenheim from Spike because, um, you know, when we have tricolors with Daisy, we'd like to have some tricolors that are traditional tricolors. Um, we usually have more blue Merle tricolors than just traditional tricolors. And so that way we're, we're kind of thinking that, um, so Paris doesn't, appear to have any um she's just got all blenheim in her pedigree and we went you know went back an extra a couple generations than usual so um hoping that rio kind of helps bring some more tricolor out with daisy's puppies oh good morning nadine how are you good morning jan and crystal Good morning, Sue. Good morning, Lori. Good morning, Susan and Lisa. They look so much cleaner on the monitor than they do in person. Well, it gets a little brighter in here. You guys will probably see how filthy they are. Remy has stopped, uh, like, tearing up the bed now that I put these little blankets in here. Just kind of like, that's all it took. It just took these thin little blankets to settle her. She was a lot like pom-pom. She needs her cozy blankets. Hey, Mike, good morning. Susie, too. You, good morning to you, too, Susie. Hi, Remy girl. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you, were you waiting for some love? Huh? Hi, Treaty. Are you going to go see your puppies? Are you going to go see your babies? You want to go outside? Oh, you're waiting for breakfast, aren't you? No, I better take your bowl. You want to go outside while you're waiting? Remy missed the potty tray overnight last night and she had to take a dump. So we're going to bring the tray a touch closer. Just keep it away from the water.
like it's everywhere for me to make a bed wherever she decides is comfy. We can lay blankets out like in all kinds of different corners and then she'll pick the spot without a blanket.
Uh, silver stitches, that's who I'm looking for. Sorry, don't mind me, I'm talking to myself. Uh, I was looking um, for you yesterday um, to talk to you about your puppy. Um, but one of my moderators is telling me that um, you had some questions about introducing your your puppy to your dog and cats. I think if, if I if memory is serving me correctly, but I don't want to get it wrong. Um, but I wanted to. Um, I had a couple of ideas. I saw that you were going to be visiting her, and so I wanted to try catching you before you saw her, so that um, so that you could uh, do some of these things. But like so. We, um, hi there. Um, so what we do is we send our puppies home, um, as part of like the, to help with their transition. We use a blanket like this. We have our families pick out a blanket and we, um, we wrap mom up like a burrito and we rub it all over her. And so like what I would really recommend you do when you go and see your puppy is to bring a blanket or a t-shirt. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't have to be anything special. Um, and just like scrub her with it. <laughs> um, get her scent all over it. Like all the good spots that your dog's gonna love. I was gonna sound silly, but her butt, get her butt. Get her belly, get her face, um, and then when you bring when you bring it home, give it to your um, give it to your dog to lay down with, um, and then that will help introduce him or if it's him or her. I thought it was him. Um, it'll help introduce him to the scent, and it's also a scent that you're bringing in, so it's something that you approve of, that's safe, that they can trust, um, and then it should also help with your cats. Um, cats are usually a little more reserved. They usually stand back a little bit. Um, I have a little bit less experience with cats, but that's kind of been what families have reported back to us. Um, and then let me get the lamb chop so I can show you what we do lamb chop. What we do is um, each puppy goes home with a lamb chop and you'll see when um, they get a little bit older, we start leaving lamb chop in here. Um, we rub it on mom every single day so that it smells freshly like mom so that when she leaves and the puppies wake up and open their eyes, um, see that she's not here, um, they can, they've got lamb chop nearby that smells like her. Um, but we do the same thing with lamb chop where we just like, I picture it like a loofah in the shower and we just scrub it all over their bodies. And so um, when you have your puppy, when you're visiting your puppy, if you have any toy, it doesn't have to be a big toy, it doesn't have to be a fancy toy, um, preferably a, a, a new toy, not a used one, um, just because a used one already has, your dog already has um, some sort of attachment with it. And you want it all to be new um, because your puppy is new. And so you don't want any previous associations with it. Um, but like same thing with the blanket, just, just scrub your puppy with it. But just scrub it all over like you're washing her with it. And then um, when you bring the toy home, um, you can give it to your dog. And then if he destroys it, let him destroy it. He lo he's loving it. Um, if they chew it up, that's a good sign. Don't um, worry that he's gonna chew up your puppy. He's not going to. Um, dogs love to chew up and mangle their toys. That's how they love them. And if he's playing with it and doing that, doing the, acting like that, that's a really good sign. Um, and so that will really help. It helps give, um, helps kind of promote that sort of positive, um, that positive, um, understanding, I guess, that they have associated with the, the scent of your puppy. 
because they know that it's not just any regular scent. They know that it's of another dog. Um, and so they will be cautious. Um, and then that's a lot that's, I mean, that kind of covers a lot of what you, a lot of the preparation that you can do beforehand. Um, if anybody else has any other ideas, please share them. Uh, and then, uh, but when it comes time to bring him home or bring her home, um, I would, the bi like the biggest thing is that to keep in mind that the dog that you have has been living with you. This is his, this is where he sleeps. This is where he, this is his every kind of little world. And so initially upon first meeting, they're oftentimes a little cautious. Um, and so we encourage families to do the initial introduction um, outside if you can, um, but in a neutral place because um, your house they see is their territory, just like if um, the UPS guy knocks on the door and they bark, they're, they're going to guard the house. Um, and you want it to be as positive as an experience as possible, both for your puppy and for your dog. And so you, want, you don't want to... Um, you want to set them up for success um, because there's really, um, you know, we can predict how they're going to react and we can try to predict, I should say, um, but it's not always right. And um, depending on the relationship you have with your dog, you might be a little more protective, a little more guarded. It might feel more intimidated by another puppy being brought in. And so you just want to be mindful of that. Um, but when you introduce them in the neutral spot, just make sure that um, I would um, I would not I would have your dog um, have the puppy if you have him if you can have two people I would have um, your dog be with the person he is most bonded with. Um, if the puppy is with who he is more bonded with. He might take that to be a little more threatening and he might be, he might co go into the introduction a little more guarded. And so um, we usually, like Daisy is a good example. When we're bringing new puppies in and we're introduced like Rio in Vienna, um, Daisy was always just with me because she's, she's like my baby. And, um, and Drew will hold uh, the dogs we're introducing and it helps your dog that um, the dog that you you have, it helps them feel secure too because they know that um, they're understanding that you're you're not bringing this dog in and replacing them. And it's not that they're actually consciously thinking all of these things. I'm just trying to put into words their behavior and kind of how we can understand and in a way that we can understand. Sorry, Siri thinks I'm talking to it. Um, and so they're not consciously thinking all of these things. It's just kind of what their instincts are telling them. And so they just, it's might be a little bit what they're feeling. Um, and so if you see, if your dog is growling, it's probably, it's not like an aggressive growl. Um, in that, in that context, if he's on neutral ground being introduced to a new puppy, um, we actually kind of encourage our adult dogs to set boundaries because puppies will often run over and just start climbing in their ears and climbing on them. And so we encourage our dogs to set boundaries with them um, rather than us telling them like, you know, no, you know, no, um, because they respond a lot better to um, the adult dog telling them where the boundary is versus us kind of involving ourselves between the two of them and trying to talk to them using our human language that the puppies don't even really understand yet. Um, it kind of complicates things and confuses them. And we find that, um, especially back when we did rescue and we had foster dogs, um, we found that the dogs have, they, they work it out. They have a way of working it out. And it's because of that hierarchy that they live in. Um, they can kind of establish where everybody falls in the dominance scale. Um, and then get everybody there with a puppy, no matter where their dominance is, um, the young puppy that you're bringing home, they're going to be at the bottom of the totem pole, no matter how submissive your dog is, your dog will be, um, the alpha 
until the puppy gets older and is able to um, and is like able to take over as alpha dog. Um, and so that, that would be another thing I would recommend is make sure that you continue respecting that your dog is alpha over puppy. Um, and then that way your dog is still, um, is one of our biggest, we credit a lot of um, our dog's co like cohesiveness to um, the fact that we respect their, the way that they do things and how they run things. And um, because we have, with Rio and Vienna, that makes 10 dogs. So we have eight adult dogs, like a, a dog pack of eight with two puppies that joined. And so the two puppies um, are kind of just being ordered around by the older dogs and they've come to accept it. And, and they're okay with it because that's just the natural order of things. Um, they don't expect to be um, higher up. And we let the dogs, if they're getting too rowdy, we let them growl, we let them um, snap at them. Uh, not, not Nothing like crazy or just, um, just um, the ones that are teaching them that are just setting some limits. Um, I don't know if our dogs have really gotten aggressive with puppies. They can, um, your adult dog will be, they'll know that, um, that your puppy is a puppy. They won't need, um, you know, they have that sort of puppy scent, kind of like human babies. You know, we all recognize babies as being um, vulnerable and defenseless and dogs are very much the same way. And that's kind of why you see um, Daisy and Pom Pom coming in and checking in on the other puppies because they're puppies of our dog pack, of the bigger dog pack. And so um, the other dogs see them as vulnerable and just needing that little extra eye. And so your dog will know um, that she's just a puppy and to give her a little bit of slack. Um, you'll even probably notice that when she does set limits or he does set limits, that um, it's much gentler than you may be used to. And so it's, it's pretty easy to tell the difference between um, your adult dog setting limits and your adult dog like being crabby and mean. Um, but I don't think we've ever seen our adult dogs actually like be downright mean to the puppies. Um, I think we only ever really see them just, we've seen them like kind of get annoyed and turn around and give them a snarl, but the puppies always respect it. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think of what else I mentioned yesterday. Um, the scent thing is huge. If it's, if, um, when I saw that you were going to go visit, visit her, um, that was big because, um, probably only about half of our families are able to make it here where they pick up their puppy with, you know, how, how things work in today's online world. And, um, if they can, we always encourage families if they can't visit to like send us a t-shirt or a blanket of something that what they smell like for their puppy and it makes a huge difference. And so if you're going to go visit, I would definitely take a couple of things. Um, I would recommend a blanket and a toy if, if you have them um, and rub them Ready? all over your puppy Ready, because when you bring um, your puppy home, yeah. there will be a difference between this new puppy I've never even smelled or where did this dog come from? And, oh, this is the face to that smell I've been sleeping in for the last month. And so they'll have more curiosity and it'll be more positive. Hungry, hungry, so um, I hope that answers some questions. I hope it helps. Here comes a hungry Remy. Hungry, hungry Remy. She's so hungry. Oh, oh, oh. She's starving. Oh, okay. Moving on. No, you don't like this one. So before you fill up, we're gonna take your vitamin. Come on, right? Make sure you switch your vitamin. All of our dogs love these vitamins, except for Remy. He hates it. It does smell like a multivitamin, though. We'll just wait. We'll wait. 
really want to repeat. You're such a good girl, my dog. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Roseanne and Susan. Oh, good morning, Dan. Bye. Chat pretty soon. You guys probably want to see puppies. Somebody, somebody's a turtle. Somebody's a turtle. There she goes. <laughs> oh, one important thing I didn't mention when you are introducing your puppy to your dog, make sure your dog is on a leash. Um, just because that's like an, just like a little extra safety thing, just in case. You're really picking through that food to find the good stuff, Rummy. I also wanted to quickly mention for any families who are watching, um, any families of puppies, if you have um, any dogs or cats at home, we are more than happy to um, do what I was just describing. And we've done this for families in the past. Um, but what we'll do is if you have dogs or cats at home, we'll, we'll take one of these blankets that we have and we'll just rub it all over puppy, just like I was just explaining, just all over. And then we'll vacuum seal it and ship it to you. And then that way you can give it to your dog or your cat or you know, or your guinea pig. Um, and then they can start familiarizing themselves with, with the scent of your puppy. 
Um, and then we're always happy to do a redo, like, um, you know, because it, it loses its freshness. And so we can always send you a lamb chop. We can send you things that, that have been freshly bottled. Oh my goodness, somebody went crawling around in mama's vulva region. My old mama is still bleeding. Oh goodness, let's get you cleaned up. Hold on, let me don't move, don't move, don't move. You would be surprised at how often they mistake um, her vulva for a nipple. Because unfortunately, it's very similarly shaped to the puppies and fits their mouths just right. Hi, Daisy Doodle. Good morning, Kim. Blueberry, your family's watching. You take a break from the schnacky. You say hi. He's like, wait, where'd my milk go? Where'd my milk go? Say hi. <laughs> I'm just trying to nurse on my finger. Just the back of him. He's gonna get a bath today because as you might be able to see, he's got poopy all over him. <laughs> you wanna look at him? Can you cut him? Oh, actually, we forgot. Can you go potty? Can you go potty poopy? Good boy, good girl potty. It's like, chill out. He's a good boy. His little thumbprint is getting so much bigger. It is so much bigger than it was when he was first born. I remember he was born thinking it was kind of tiny and then remembering Rio's. Baby, don't eat her food. You get to eat that your own food. Potty everybody after they eat. Who is this famous friend that must have been like? We have a friend. Have a friend that was hot. Kim, we loved your video, your announcement video. That was the most adorable thing we've ever seen. Um, we we're so excited to get to know you and your kids and your husband. And help Blueberry get to know you guys. He's such a good little puppy. He is an awesome little puppy. He loves to be cradled. Yeah, I mean, he's hungry right now, as you just saw. He didn't much care for being taken away from the booby, but. Um, when he's not serving, he, he loves to be a cradle in our hands, just like cupped. And then if we like stroke the back of his neck, he just goes right to sleep. Daisy's like, I want a puppy. She wants to come in and potty them, actually, is the more accurate statement. When they were first born, Remy would lay here. They would nurse and Daisy would pop in and she would just go down the line. She would just start pottying this one and then this one and then this one. 
And Romy would just sleep while Daisy potty them all. You're such a good girl, Daisy. You're such a good girl. You're a good mama. Yeah. Yeah, I think it might be. Oh, silver stitches. That's really nice of you to say. She's, she's my baby. I love her so much. Somebody got poopy there. We're not gonna eat these food, you stinker. You got your own. You're a good girl, Daisy Doodle. All the puppies had a pretty slow go in morning. I mean, this is like the first they're really having a big breakfast. It's almost 10 o'clock. Yeah, they so they've just kind of been crawling over and oh, thank you. My puppy. 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 Um, oh, she's not, she's actually being really sweet. Yeah, no, she's not taking her food, but like the this is the first that they're actually feasting. They're kind of snacking this morning. Oh, <laughs> Peanut almost had the vulva. There's the nipple. Get a little ahead. Good girl, Daisy Doodle. So um, your breeder will should tell you like exactly what the routine is when when you pick her up, but by about eight weeks. Um, we're feeding, um, depending, depending, it really depends on our size, but for our petite puppies at two, at about two pounds, um, we're usually giving them about a quarter cup twice a day. Um, but they don't usually, we don't usually have to do the twice a day. We're usually just free feeding them because they kind of snack on their food. And so, um, I don't know if that's going to be an option for you though, because you already have, you have another dog. So, um, we usually, our puppies are, usually able to go home with that sort of option, either doing a, a twice a day feed or a free feed. But for our smaller puppies, it's usually about a quarter cup twice a day. For the bigger puppies, we're usually giving them about half a cup twice a day. A puppy food too. Yes, Peanut to Archie now. Thank you, Sue, for reminding me. He's not Peanut, he's Archie. <laughs> That's why we like to get the names early before their ears are open so that um, we have them right when their ears are open. Oh, thanks, Michelle and Vicki. I love daisies. So I didn't, Blenheim was like my absolute favorite color. When we first got into Cavaliers, I was a big sucker for like that real classical regal, like a perfect thumbprint and dark Blenheim, dark chestnut coat. And um, so when we got Daisy, she was actually from a Blenheim and tricolor litter. The, um, we wanted a girl because we were we were trying to start with the breeding, and um, uh, we weren't thinking of getting a tricolor at first, but she was so sick and cute. Um, so for those who don't know, we um, we get our, our dogs from like confirmation show breeders um, because we want our our breeding dogs to um, have a nice long history of healthy ancestors and. Um, 
it's a lot easier to find that in in breeders that are doing confirmation showing that are have been testing their dogs long before um, it became trendy to do so. Um, and so we, we reach out to to a breeder that we find that we've um, been looking into and kind of tell them, you know, the types of dogs we're raising that we're not, we're not raising the next show dog. We're not raising a, a sporting dog for fly ball or agility. Um, we're raising them to be primarily um, like emotional support animals um, and family pets, just companion dogs. And we find that um, we, we can kind of raise them all as emotional support animals. And then they don't have to be designated an emotional support animal to just make a really great dog, to make a really great family dog. Um, and so we ask the, we talk to the breeders about the dogs we're, we're, um, we're raising. And so we ask for three Daisy over to show you. We say to them, um, you know, which dog is it going to be? Is it going to win you your next ribbon? And they Daisy pointed out Daisy and said she would be a great puppy for us. Um, what would disqualify her is all of her freckling on her face. Well, I mean, there's a couple of things that would disqualify her, but that's the big one is um, Cavaliers are not supposed to have, according to AKC guidelines, um, you shouldn't have all the freckling on their faces. So um, I think her freckling is absolutely adorable. So that's why I fell in love with her. Um, especially when she was a little puppy. And that was really sweet. But so that's that's how we ended up getting Daisy. And I've come to love tricolors ever since because she's, I, mean, she, I think she's beautiful. But um, uh, she's got a great personality too. So I've come to really love tricolors. They, um, they're like, they look very, if you have family that has two Cavaliers or I'm sorry, if they have one Cavalier and they're looking to get another, if they have a Blenheim and they're asking us their opinion, um, on like what would look cool. Um, I usually say that if they like tricolors that it's always really, I think it's really pretty to pair a Blenheim at a tricolor. You know, if you have two, um, female dogs, um, or if you want to have two Cavaliers, two girls, then um, <laughs> you are not going to sell. Um, I always think that uh, a Blenheim and a Tricolor, like um, Remy and Daisy, paired together as buddies is always really cute. Yes, you guys are. Rubies, a Ruby and a Blenheim is also really cute together. I mean, really any combination, they're all cute, but... Um, somebody put it really well in the chat. I, what did they say? Oh. Somebody said something about how like the coat um, coat color didn't matter as much once they kind of got to know the Cavalier that um, their coats their coats look a lot prettier when you when you get to know how awesome they are. Daisy has a little bit like sleeker fur as Remy gets this. I think it's adorable. Remy gets this cute little bed head on the top of her head. Paris does a similar, Paris has a similar sort of bed head. You're not going to eat Remy's food. I know you're eyeballing it. <laughs> You're so funny, Daisy. These are all runny. Might even give Remy a bath today because she's got some poopy on her. And usually our moms um, usually clean themselves up really well after delivery, which is impressive because um, there's a lot of birth fluid and they're usually soaking wet. Like we have to, um, 
while they're whelping, we're changing out the towels usually between each puppy because um, if we don't, she'll start getting cold because of how wet she gets. Um, but so they're, they're usually really good about cleaning themselves up. But um, Remy, Remy, it's her first litter, so she's still learning. <laughs> so we'll probably give her a bath today when we get the puppies' baths. That way everybody can be fresh and clean and we'll be in a new bedding. What are you at? Excuse me. You have your own food, you stinker. And it's right over there. Just a good girl, baby. Hi. We have a try, Jack Russell. 13, wow. Woo, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, I love you. I love you too. And there more, I did two packages. Yay, thank you. No, Daisy, you don't get any of that. No. You can get some of them. Yep. Let's get your food, Daisy. No. Stinkers. Honey, she loves the prenatals, but she hates them. Oh, hey, good morning, Linda. 
Um, Bella comes home tomorrow, actually. Um, how how old is oh Remy? She is she's two almost two and a half. She turned two at the just after the first of the year. This is our first letter. Daisy, I see you sneaking kibbles from the bowl. Here. This is your bowl. That's Remy's bowl. <laughs> Heather, I think you're right. She's like, I don't have puppies to snuggle yet. Girl, Daisy. Good girl, Daisy. Let's see. Can I make Remy take her vitamin now? Oh my gosh, Katie, you are so adorable. I'm sure it's holding this down a little so you can see. Hey there, Anu. Thanks for joining us. Welcome from, from uh, sorry, Finland, not Poland, Finland. Jan, you don't want you don't want two puppies just going crazy in your house while you're trying to relax in your in your golden years. Well, whatever could you be talking about? Minnie would never do that to you. <laughs> Vienna and Rio are doing really, really well, actually. They, um, they are, Rio seems to be, he's getting along in the pack fitting in very well. Vienna's a little more standoffish. She's actually, um, reminding me quite a bit of Minnie. Now that Minnie's not here, she seems to be almost taking on some of her characteristics. Like she's kind of filling that place that Minnie held. Um, 
Rio is like bounding around like he's one of the big dogs. So he's a lot of fun. Um, and Vienna is she wants to be taken care of. But she, she likes to be perched on her arms. Like, so we'll be holding her kind of like like this. And she'll just be perched up here looking out while we just walk around. Um, so she's she's a bit of a princess. And <laughs> we're we're catering to that a lot. Because she's really sweet. So they're doing really well. They have very, very different personalities, but also really great personalities. They're still cavalier personalities. So we're really excited. We're, we're glad we kept Rio. Um, he's going to be a really nice dog to have around. I'm trying to talk about how we'll, how we'll adjust the live. Um, and Rio and Vienna will be very good socialization tools for these guys. And so when we, like when these guys are out in out by the front door um, in the big puppy pen, we'll bring Rio and Vienna out into the puppy. Kind of like we brought Pom Pom for Paris's puppies. Um, or like when Remy was a puppy and we put her in with the puppies um, when she was little. Um, but I think that's what we're going to do with Rio and Vienna so that... Uh, we can help socialize the puppies, and then you guys can kind of see how they're doing. Everybody looks so cozy. It's okay. She's okay. Girl, one dog. Kiwi has got, like, the primo spot there. He's got the spot everybody's in line for. I'd say, except for Cutie, she's very um, comfortably positioned on Archie. Let's see. I'm not sure how well you guys can see, but um, Archie, is, his head is right here, like underneath. So here is Ollie, and Archie's head is right here. You can see a little bit better. So she, She's kind of laying on mom's leg and on Archie. Silver stitches. I wish there was a way to. I really dislike YouTube's. Um, you know, they usually have like a, not YouTube, but other um, platforms have some sort of message or image sharing ability. And I really wish that um, we were able to share pictures like that because people are always, um, oftentimes are trying to describe their dogs and we would love to see them. And so the best we've been able to get is we look, we squint our eyes at your um, profile pictures Like Daisy, who should be my profile picture? Huh. You're a good girl. I know you want Remy's food. Drew pours um, gravy in Remy's food because she she needs to eat a little bit extra right now, and she's had a poor appetite. And so Daisy knows this; she can spell it. <laughs> so she wants Remy's food over her food. Sneaky, sneaky. I was um I was already like waking up and stuff and like um my back is so sore that even when I moved my head it hurt really bad. Well take some time at all and then you can do that. Yeah, it was only um it was only when I figured out a way to just move my entire 
body up and say, I'm going to my head and then my arm. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Linda. Yeah, I miss her. Fortunately, she's coming back in a few days. I'm glad she's having fun in Disney, though. Oh, thanks, Sue. What are you doing? Thank you. How cute is a cutie? Cutie, like tutti? I don't know. She, Isn't she sweet? Cutie. She was originally kind of on top of Archie and like snuggled a little bit tighter. Oh, is there more names? No, it's the same. Same as before. Oh. Um, I told his mom to let us know whenever like they were all, whenever they were watching and that I would bring them up close to the camera and, and so she oh that's all, all right michael no oh, good boy that's a good boy there blueberry good boy kim if you're still on i have been re-watching that video over and over it brings me so much happiness it is thank so, you so much for sending that yeah that is it's really cute we love it thank you jan that's for Remy. I was trying to give it to her while she was eating, but I didn't want to discourage her from eating. We have to, you have to force her. We have to put it in there and Sorry. just keep her lips closed. Let her chew it out. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> Can I see her? Yeah, I'll send it to you if it's coming on. Okay. Do you have the airdrop on? Oh, um, I think so. I don't know how to turn it off. Good boy, Blueberry. That's it. Get after it, Boyle. Good boy. Yeah, do it. Arr. So give me that milk, Mom. Oh, where'd your plate go? Except. Where do you think? Your plate. Oh, uh, you know what? I think I ate threw it away. Come on. Who gave me that one? I'm not going so, I opened my raspberry heating pad and turned them off. Okay. <laughs> um, I opened the raspberry lemonade and um, it, it had yeah, a very. Let's, let's talk about it. Yeah. Yeah.
was in there. Such a good con. Wait, where did Mama Remy go? Where did Mama Remy go? Oh, there she is. Hi, sweetie. You're such a good girl. I see you found the, the bone tip that I laid out for you. Yes, you're the yoga girl. Did you use your tray? It looks like you used your tray. Oh, Kiwi's trying to get chuckles. Oh my goodness, Blueberry, your face. Oh, he's, Blueberry has such a baby face. I love it. He's so darn cute. Some sets and collars. Oh, okay. That way, that way, just want to make sure all the buddies. Okay. See how pretty her coloring is? This is what I meant by how it's modeled. She's got this white fur mixed in with brown fur. Blueberry has a similar shade. Don't go far, Remy. I'm going to scrub lantern for you. All right, Army, come here. Army! Come here. Come on. Come on. Let's get to it. Let me jump. I know this is weird. This is weird, but you'll get used to it and you'll learn to love it. It's like a massage. How much they love your face and your ears. Actually, my hair would be easier to do because you can touch your belly. Oh, good girl. Oh, Try to rub lamb chop over all the places that the puppies like to snuggle. So, like, her belly and her face are the big ones near her chest right here. And we try to get like every spot of lamb chop in every crevice. Just because there's six puppies and you know they don't discriminate. They might snuggle with her ear, they might snuggle with they might, they might be chewing on the tags, you know, we don't they could be snuggling anywhere. Oh, and it's also got like 100 squeakers. It's got a squeaker in the main body, and then it's got a squeaker in each foot, each back foot and each front foot. And so then we put lamp shop off to the side, and that way if they wake up and mom's not in here, um, it still kind of smells like mom. And then um, they'll, oftentimes they'll come and snuggle lamp shop, but it just provides a little extra layer of security for them. She makes so much milk. We're really lucky that um, Drew and I were talking this morning about timing of everything because um, 
Daisy, when she has puppies, she's such an underproducer of milk that we have to have a lactating mom kind of on standby. Um, we, we, cause we really prefer to, if we have to supplement our puppies, we really prefer to supplement them with breast milk. Um, they get the, they, just like with people, they get, um, all the, um, the antibodies and they get all the passive immunizations from, you know, all the, the, the shots, vaccines that the moms have had, um, all that passes through their breast milk and it, um, you know, it doesn't like vaccinate them necessarily, but it protects them for the duration that they're, um, that they're nursing. And so we really like to supplement them with mom's milk if we can, um, which is not too hard to do when they're this age because we can just hand express milk. But Daisy is such an underproducer that um, it's like the puppies, poor puppies, they'll be, they'll be nursing trying to get milk and she'll just be empty. And um, when we first kind of realized that that was the problem we were having. We had Robin who had just weaned her puppies and we brought Robin in and um, the puppies went to town because Robin was filled with milk. She had just weaned her puppies and um, the puppies went to town and they had all really full bellies. And it was nice because then when Daisy came back in, Daisy could kind of relax a little bit because the puppies had been hungry and so they were whining and fussy and um, she couldn't make them happy. I mean, for all of you moms and grandmas and dads and grandpas, you know what it's like with a hungry baby if you're out and about and you don't have something to give them. And so once the puppies were fed, it was like Daisy kind of had a minute to breathe and a break to take and then it kind of gave her some time to refill a little bit. And then the puppies um, ate again. And so um, we kind of found that with when we have an underproducer like that, if we have another mom who's lactating, um, if we can bring her in once or twice a day even, that's usually just enough to like top them off um, and then give mom a chance to kind of recover and refill. Um, you know, just like with people, breast milk is kind of a supply and demand sort of process, um, but it still has its limits. If Genetically speaking, Daisy is an underproducer of milk, like how people can be. No matter how much demand we place on her, she's still only going to produce, you know, so much. Um, and it's, it's impressive how much you can encourage their milk to. It's a lot, you know, a lot like with people, you know, pump, feed. The more you use, the more they make. But with Daisy, it's like, like with Remy, we put puppies on a couple extra nipples and then we'll almost we'll see that replacement milk almost like later that day. She'll suddenly be much fuller. Daisy, when we do that, uh, the milk might replace, but with the puppies already being hungry, they just drink it right away. And so she can never really get ahead. And so that's kind of what happens when we bring Robin in, or like in this case, we'll be bringing Remy in. Um, but gives her an opportunity to kind of refill and give, have something to give them as a as a meal. And then the puppies do so much better. Um, and then we have the stuff that we give for, um, so we give this to runts, but we also give it to puppies that like in Daisy's situation, if they're not getting enough milk, it's called nurse mate. And it's just like jam packed with nutrients and vitamins that they need calories. And what we love about it is that um, what's good for our runty puppies is that um, it's just like a very, very small, minute amount, um, like less than a pea size, and it's full of nutrients and calories. And so we could just put a little bit on their tongue, it goes right down, and it doesn't take up any room in their stomach. And so then if we want to supplement them with formula or if we want to put them directly um, to nurse, because um, a lot of times we'll just we'll put them to nurse and we'll just kind of hold and support them until they're full, but it, it doesn't take up room then. And so, um, this is, this stuff is awesome. Um, it seems that whenever we give it, they always, it perks them up a little bit too. It kind of gives them some energy to nurse, which is really nice. So that's one of our little tricks.
not sure how well you guys can see it, but I always like to point this out. Allie's doing it real well. So when they're nursing at this age, they're very top heavy. So they're using their front paws, they're using to, to knead and massage mom's, mom's boob here. And, um, and so those two front paws are up top. And so they're balancing on their hind legs. And they're very top heavy because as they're nursing and kneading, they're kind of swaying back and forth. And so they use their tails to balance. And so you'll see them stick them straight out. And then they have like a 90 degree turn and then go straight down. And so you see Allie doing it real well right here. Here's Archie's. And there's Audrey's. She's got a nice one. Now, blueberries is hard to see because her paw is in the way, but it's there. I always think it's kind of interesting to watch because um, they move their, you'll see them move their tails to balance their entire bodies. Their tail almost almost works kind of like our big toes.
Oh, snowflake. What? Oh, oh wait, no, that's not white. That's not snowflake. Kiwi. Kiwi. It's not stuff like what is it, Audrey? Yeah. Oh, Audrey. Audrey made a big old mess. The tail, the tail. Hey, come on. Daisy. Is Daisy gonna help clean up? She'd probably love to. Does anyone help? I know. Look at that right here. Look at that right there. You need to lay it back. It's a big old mess. Big old pretty mess. No, don't kick him off of that. That was his. Daisy would love to eat it. Daisy, she. <laughs> For those who are less familiar with Daisy, she will go into the dirty dog laundry to pull out the blankets so that she can eat the dried puppy poop. <laughs> she, um, it's puppy poop is a delicacy for Daisy. Oh. It's dessert. <laughs> <laughs> Making me sick. Like, I'm like, we love our desserts too, but uh, <laughs> we have a different taste. Um, Sue's saying that she can feel the excitement um, for silver stitches getting her puppy in the mouth. Oh. It's so hard to wait. Mostly, I, the, I don't. I don't know how all the families do it watching YouTube every day. I wouldn't have been able to wait for Daisy watching her on YouTube every day. That would have been impossible. I would have had to shut it off. Are you cleaning up uh, blueberry? Oh, did they uh, pick a name for blueberry? No. Yeah. No pressure, doing uh, pressure. I know, I know. I, well, I like s'more. I know. I told her. I told her that we like let out an audible on um, her daughters and said that yeah, said their names. Marshmallow and s'more. Like marshmallow and s'mores. Kim, if you're on Kim, right? Kim, yeah, yeah Kim. Kim. Uh, your daughter has a knack for 
picking some really, we're picking cavalier names. Yeah. We thought those names were really cute. Yeah. Oh, you just popped them off. Why did you do that? I don't know if your son seemed as thrilled about those names, but um, that would make very cute little Kevlar names. There he is. Good morning, Dummy. Oh, oh, Thank you, Sue, for the clarification. Hey, Love you too, bud. Hey, do you want a cinnamon roll, buddy? Sure. Okay, I'll get the icing. For the poopy puppy icing. I'm trying to get the video of Daisy from some of mom's. And she's not being very cooperative. Hey, Daisy Doodle, you're not being cooperative. Come here, sweetie. I want to show how pretty you are to some families. You're such a sweetie. Come here. You're such a sweet girl. Yeah. Daisy is much more reserved. She's a much more reserved cavalier. She's not. Uh, she's not as like um, playful and running around. She just wants to snuggle nonstop. That's her purpose in life: is snuggling, snuggling, and reducing my anxiety. Yep, she is my favorite dog. She's a good girl. She's actually like, I don't know what snuggling you is like. I don't know why. I'll get some pictures of her snuggling. She's much more snuggly than this. Oh, no, Randy wants to snuggle. Everybody really wants to snuggle.
Army dog. Second. Don't you want it? Mm -hmm. okay, let's do some potty on. You potty, Miss Cutie? Can go potty? Good potty. Good potty. Good go potty. Good go potty. Good go potty. This is all very introductory potty training. Um, we so much prefer to start before their eyes and ears have opened because their other senses are um, so much more sensitive as a result, um, which is like a survival thing. You might hear people talk about um, people who have lost set, like one of their senses if they've gone blind or deaf. Um, they'll talk about how um, their other senses become more heightened and so we try to take advantage of that while um, their eyes and ears are closed because they're using their sense of smell to navigate everything in their whole lives and their little world. And so if we can help them learn that they want to be smelling the pine while they're pottying, it helps encourage them to seek it out when they need to potty later on. We don't even really need to teach them to poop in the pellets because they really, they kind of self-teach that. They just begin pooping in the pellets on their own. Good boy. There you go, buddy. Of course, from his angle, nobody can see what's going on. <laughs> Little Mr. Archie is, he's just, Relaxing through all of it. We all done? It's definitely very nice. Go potty. Good boy. Go potty. Good boy.
Ali is like out cold. You gonna go potty, Ali? You gonna potty, Ali? Good girl. You go potty, Ali. Good go potty. Good boy. You guys can't see a whole lot, but he's he's completely limp in the hands. He's just they're getting used to it, and so they're not so. <laughs> Good boy. Kiwi wants to go next. Relax. Relax. Good boy. What a good boy. What a good boy. It's a good go potty. What a good boy. I'm gonna go potty. Oh, we got some poop out of him. Good mom and dog. No around him? Okay. They always know when they're done. Very good idea. And sometimes we'll even be like, no, keep going. And they'll, they'll insist they're done. And then we'll try to finish potting them and she'll, she'll, she's always right. Which is funny because sometimes that she doesn't even really lick them to find out. She can just kind of sniff them and know. Good girl, Audrey. That's a good girl potty. Oh, she started yawning. And so Romy went to sniff her breath and gave her a kiss. She held on. Is Audrey held on? Do you want any more potty? You're just a good Audrey. You're just a good girl. And that is how we start the potty training. Um, what will come next is when um, they bear weight, when they're standing up on their own. That's when we'll stand them up in this and um, we'll kind of We'll stand them up and have Remy kind of potty them from behind. But then we also can, um, what's really nice is because it's just a reflex with mom pottying them, it's a bit of a um, easy button. We can just massage their tummies right here and um, it will, it'll just they'll reflexively go potty. Um, and so then that way it's a lot easier to build that connection um, than if we were just taking them outside and hoping they would go potty um, so that we could reinforce it. And so um, they learn a lot faster because every time we put them in the pellets, we can have them go potty and it's just a much quicker, um, much quicker way to learn. Because each time they're with the pellets, we're able to, we're able to reinforce the reason that we're doing it. And that reflex, um, we don't use it much past like four or five weeks. Um, I think out of curiosity, we once tried to see if they would still have it at about six or seven weeks and we could not elicit it. And so um, I think it goes away around four to five weeks when um, kind of around when they start going potty on their own without mom's help. Uh, so it doesn't work. It doesn't work for very long. It does go away. And so. We try to take advantage of it while we can.
Thank you. Good girl. Why don't you lay down for me? Why don't you lay down and get cozy to me, okay? So I see there's a puppy back here. Oh, you're so considerate. <laughs> a little puppy back here. That's why Remy's not laying down. She, she's positioned kind of funny. She looked a little uncomfortable. Oh, yeah, you guys can kind of see her. There we go. There you go. Okay, there you go. Oh, that's better. You're such a good girl. You've got such <laughs> this is blueberry. I, I want to say this is blueberry. I think it is. Yep, that's blueberry. <laughs> it's his feet in here. There he goes again. in my hands and I just like lay down their sides like they usually do and let her cuddle them and so I got them nice and close to the pillows and it was great. Awesome. And those last couple of times they all were like <laughs> trying, to get, trying to get to her. Don't worry Daisy, they turn into a puppy. She's <laughs> <laughs> like her tail like oh, they get him. I have, but what are you looking for? Like, what are you? Her, like, I don't know if it's her muscle tone or what, but her, like, her chest is kind of open as, like, wrong. Oh, uh, she looks yeah. so pretty. Yeah. She just looks more um, uh, solid. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, exactly. She's still down. Taking the time to sit and admire her and like look at her and, and analyze. And so it was really like seeing that. I was like, oh man, wow, you really look really good there. Tommy? Mommy, Tommy? It's never going to get old. Um, I'm always going to remember Roman and his family. The mommy, The Tommy, Mommy.
Well, uh, go ask them if they want them. Yes. So you had one and a half already, and so they they get the Two opportunity. And a half oh, you had one and a half. Two and a half. If you've already had two and a half, then you really don't get more. Yeah, you really don't get more. But probably you had one whole one and a half of one. So that's oh, one and a half. Two. You had, two you, had, you had three halves. I had two halves because I had one full one and a half.
So interesting to me. It is. I can look at this the whole age. You know what I mean?
Oh, uh, that dodgeball tournament was canceled. Elizabeth? Elizabeth? Did you hear what I said? That dodgeball tournament was canceled. Oh, it's canceled? The dodgeball tournament. Oh, so yeah. they didn't get the tunes. They're probably hearing the tunes now. Yeah. That's what I thought that would be a nice thing to tell them.
know what? Let's think about it. Had we and the and the truck the excursion not broken right before we took that trip to Florida, we would have taken the excursion down to uh, Alabama. And had we done that, then we wouldn't have driven back and been like, we've got to get a motor home. Like, we would have just kept the truck, kept the trailer, and because we all the Yeah, I guess we don't know. I just like, feel like it had we had an all the on in the excursion instead of us all the time. It would have been because the travel was just the length of the drive. Yeah. are so darn precious, I can't get over it. Do you think that, like, do you think that um, you would desensitize, you know, like with any, with anything, but it just never gets old. Like every litter is just absolutely so precious and wonderful. And they all amaze me. You know, it's like having you have children and they say that, you know, your love just expands. You, you can't run out. It's like each little individual puppy is always just so amazing. It never gets old. <laughs> you can do those little things. They all have such little personalities. And um, I say that um, there's, there's, there's a good amount of people who will argue that um, 
they can't have or don't have personality at this age. And I would argue that um, if they believe that, then they probably haven't spent enough time with their puppies because they, all our puppies have so much personality that's coming out. They're all so different. Some are more shy than others, more reserved. Some are more adventurous, more curious, braver. Some are more timid, like right from the start, Minnie from Paris's litter, she was, oh, I called her the observer because she always just stood back and watched what was going on and then would participate if she wanted to. And it started like before her eyes were even open. She always just, um, just kind of, she would, she would feed, she would make sure she had what she needed. She would come and snuggle on Paris's ear um, and on her neck. I mean, what did you get into outside? Um, but she would come and snuggle up on Paris's ear and she would just keep to herself. And um, I joked that she was an introvert. And then as her eyes opened and her personality developed, she, she was very much that way as she continued to grow. And um, I believe she's still kind of that way. Jan can probably um, tell you guys more about how she's developed, but I believe she still likes to observe. Um, but I'd be curious to know how that's, um, how her personality has developed now that she's the only puppy. My cutie is always upside down. <laughs> Peanut. I'm so <laughs> And like, um, when mom leaves, we can, um, uh, like puppies who are very much people puppies are easily comforted by being cradled by us. They'll, um, quiet and they'll go to sleep usually. Um, the ones that are more independent will um, fight a little bit longer to um, stop mom from leaving or for us to get mom before they'll settle. Um, those are all things that we kind of, those are some of the things that like we work out and kind of evaluate early on. And then the puppies who uh, are more independent like that, if their families want them to be more snuggly and more, more, um, uh, to be more like dependent on them, so to speak. Um, we, we work to, um, to help them come to really like that and prefer, prefer to be snuggled. And so we, um, it's a lot of like nature nurture sort of stuff. We try to help mold those characteristics. Um, cause they're all, you know, even if the puppy's a little bit more independent overall, they still have a very cavalier personality, a cavalier temperament. Oh, well, the babies are sleeping at our food. All right, You're kicking everybody, sweetie. You're kicking everyone. There we go. Now let's just bring the herd up here. You got a 
got a big old belly, blueberry. Wait, blueberry does? Yeah, you got a big old belly. You got a big old belly. Fix the black over there. Try to pat it nicely down here so that it's like a it's like a giant dog bed, but with the oversized blanket that we keep it keep all the all the blankets and bedding we keep it safe from that. So, the train, the train stuff that we have downstairs. So, knock it over.
I know, I know. Is that what you're still doing all for
So cozy right here. 
See where those eyeballs. Oh, 
Love you, dude. <laughs> Let's close the door over this. Yeah. Hey, Bradley, you close the door all the way. Thank you.
happen. Oh, hey, Terry, how are you? I don't know if you're still on, but it's nice to see you. Terry's from our first letter with the C. She's a very, very, very nice lady. And she has an Oliver too. Little Ruby. He's so stinking cute. He was a runt and so he's a little. He's um, kind of like Jenny. If you guys remember Jenny um, from Missy's most more most recent letter. Um, Jenny is a runt who was just kind of like her to be on the smaller side. Daisy Doodle, you want to come see my lap? Like you're stuck on a computer? Oh, you're gonna go sit in a bed? Yeah, it's a cozy bed, huh? Hi there, Adam. Isha, hi. Stitches. I'm not sure. Do silver stitches? What should I call you? Silver stitches? Silver stitches? I bet you're getting really, really excited for your puppy. If she, if she's in your picture, from what I can see, she's absolutely precious. Hi there, JS. I think you're exactly right. I think they're gonna be right around like 22 pounds. I think with exception for Blueberry. I think Blueberry is gonna be um, around more like 18 pounds. I've been kind of looking at his body structure a little bit and his bone, like his, his, uh, his frame is not nearly as big as theirs. I shouldn't say not nearly. Um, it's, it's nearly as big, but um, it's he's quite a bit smaller frame. Like they seem to be almost like like a level up. Um, but he's still like he's growing at a really healthy rate, so we're not concerned that he's like small for for him. We think he's right where he's supposed to be, and so that initial. Bobble kind of when we were doing his weights when he was like five, six days old. Um, I think he was just kind of um, leveling out. As they get bigger, um, I was talking earlier about how they balance with their tails. But as they get bigger, they do what Cutie's doing and they stick both hind legs out like this.
cute. Thank you.
Hey there, Anna. I'm sorry, I didn't see you. You found him coming early. Check out that pigment. She's got pigment. It's Audrey's got pigment. particular he is. He's got pigment too. <laughs> and then Blueberry is it's so cozy I'm not gonna pull him up. <laughs> I wouldn't want anyone to pull me up there either. Ah, how precious he is. So pretty and so soft. Mm -hmm. 
Hi, Daisy. I'm Victoria. Yeah, there's a picture of her. Oh, there's a picture of her. Hi, Daisy. Hi, Daisy. Mommy, are your puppies happy? Looks like you've been digging in your bed a little bit. That just happened, or did I miss that? Huh? Is that new, or did I miss it? Got some water. I can see that. I see you got some water. Are we so funny about water? She hates to get her ear wet. Baby. <laughs> well, I wish you guys could see Daisy's face. She's so cute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can be flexible. This is why I um, 
gave you guys a warning early on that it's very normal for mom to lay on them and sit on them and they won't break because it happens a lot. <laughs>
I suppose we should probably remove lamb chops so we don't confuse puppies looking for nipples. I'm sorry, Allie. I didn't mean for lamb chop to confuse you. Little Miss Cutie, she always ends up on her back. She's so funny.
okay, Ronnie. It's okay, Tweety.
kind of baby.
Your babies. All right, go see your babies. See your babies. Good girl. Go see your babies, Ronnie. Daisy, <laughs> no, not Daisy C babies. Hermie C babies. Good girl. Let me see your babies. No, Daisy, what about you?
I get it. Yeah, it's also like but when, just so you know, you're always welcome to just come in here. When I'm in here, I'm kind of just supervising what gets in front of you. Yeah, and you're always welcome to come here. And there's also like the puppies that are like doing their sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah, I think it would be like 
very nice if if we converted all the John stuff and then converted the Vetra and stuff, all the rooms we talked about. Yeah. And then um, using this room for newborn puppies. Mm -hmm. um, beside, like, when you don't. To leave out of this room, we could use the you know, whole closet would make things that the puppy needed to. And then you guys could, like, get, like, um, so you could guys could bring like a mattress up here for when you have to supervise them, or the kids could alternate nights. Kids can always help. <laughs> cool. Um, like like when when they're newborn, they have to like you have to check on probably them. Probably when, the, when they're newborns, we're probably always going to have up with us in our bedroom. Yeah. Um, move our bedroom back uh, down to the guest room. Probably we'll just move the newborn puppies to it. Like the welcome room to our bedroom. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear. oh, Iron. She, she like, budged in. You owe her pets. In order to see her puppies, you have to pay the fee, and that is petting her. <laughs> yeah, that's a good girl. That's the Remy rule. <laughs> the Remy rule. Exactly. Like she, like, she, she does. Every time I sit down right there to see the puppies, she comes up to me for um, pets or treats because I always give her a treat and tell her to go see the puppies. <laughs> She's moving the things. Moving the dog. Here she is. She's turning her fine. Seeing her puppies. Do we have a family? Yes. Oh, wait, they're all there. Does she have a name? Um, no. This is Audrey. Yes, that's Audrey. For some reason, I feel like I have a stronger connection with her. Maybe it's just because I, I, because she was the only one I like, used because I only saw her. Being oh, her, oh my god! So the, the, this is gonna look just she's gonna look just like Remy with how her thumbprints are coming together. Her face is so pretty. I know it's like so like, perfectly symmetrical. And her it's very, little cheeks look like Paris's. Yeah, it's very classic, but it's adorable. Like, she has a scrunchy face. Oh, yeah, she does have a scrunchy face. <laughs> it's so cute. I love that we got. Cutie has a scrunchy face, too. Like her yeah, and it Allie. looks like she does. She's kind of chunky. She's a chunky monkey. She loves hey, eating. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, she does. Scrunchy face. Oh, you look really pretty. <laughs> he is. Archie. He looks like he should be milk him, but <laughs> he's not. Check his tail. He's good. He's good. They all freak out when they let him out. Hi, Sue. Yeah, it's good to see you too. And you've got a little bit of poop on your back. Got a little poop on your back. I'm going to move you over to the love to look at. Oh, it's dry. Oh. <laughs> Is 
Especially since we weren't planning it, um, we, um, we almost always need a new life to the mom when she has babies because she underproduces milk so much. And got pregnant, she is. She doesn't have a whole lot of milk, so it's going to work out really well that um, these puppies will be weaning when her puppies are yeah, and born. Then, and then after that, we're going to have Missy, and, and that'll be when she's done. Missy will be. Just coming out of repeat cycle when babies are going home. Mm -hmm. And so that's when we'll move the live stream on to Rio and Vienna. I'm so glad Ellen is really this healthy. Especially know. since it's her first and yeah. and she first litters on her scissors. Yeah. Which I have difficulty. I hope it stays this way. <laughs> She's lays on top of them. They always seem to find the way they're like where to go though. They find the best path. I'm such a good girl. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> baby tripped and fell into my arm. Oh, baby. Look at those sweet babies. You got such sweet babies. Girl, run dog. I know your babies love when you do this. You're such a good girl. He's still in the little pre-run spot.
to. I feel like this 18 is just warm. Yeah. Remy, 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 you're staying here. Well, do you want to let her outside? I'll, I'll come get her.
Sometimes we need to be with a girl. Go see your babies. Go see your babies. Good girl. Baby sit. Good girl. Good girl, baby doodle. Baby, 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 nice baby. Remy, are you looking for your food? It's right here, sweetie. Are you looking for your food? Right here. Are you looking for your water? Right here.
say you want to get uh, changed in the pajamas? Uh, do we change the pajamas and uh, have cookies and milk? I'm tired.
在规则上是。to dress up with them. I'm a, a glass of milk, you're an egg carton, and then they are the eggs.
For me, that's good. Bad. Pretty good recipe.
She's got a little bit closer to you. Huh? She got a little bit closer to you. Hmm. 
I can't even. And do it. <laughs> I tried, but I probably shouldn't have. <laughs> I know. Daisy's like, I'm not taking it. Did you see the window? You know what's up? Do you know what's up? Uh, he was in the kitchen last night. Okay. Love you guys. Did you check the living room? Yeah. I'm going to check his bedroom after that, after the kitchen. Or the workout room. Thank you.
Thank you.